All right, folks. So uh, catching up to live time here. This is a, a show match for a tournament called All Visible Cup. I believe All Visible Cup starts in a couple weeks. This is just to promote the fact this tournament's happening. And the basis of this tournament, before I really talk about the map, is that everything's always visible. Wait, what? Is it played on Explored? This isn't all visible. Being played on Explored is very different from all visible. What? Does Capture Age not do all visible? Uh, Margugu says, don't copy me, man. I think Capture Age doesn't do all visible, maybe. I think... I'm unsure if the players are wrong. Or if the Capture Age just straight up doesn't work with all visible. I'm going to assume that they could see what the other's doing because Margugu is over here. And uh, that Capture Age just literally doesn't work. You know, I, I guess Fog of War isn't really needed here. Okay. So basically how this works is everything's always visible. Uh, it removes the Fog of War from the game, which is going to allow Margugu to be a massive nerd and annoy his opponent. Uh, the map is Mirage, and there's lots of dolphins and, and fish here on Mirage. And Margugu is gone for an early dock. Villagers on the fish. We might see fishing ships. And then uh, Classic Pro has done a very similar thing here. We've got Magyar's Hindustani, so I'm expecting a scout war, especially with all the food. I've actually never seen this map before, which is pretty cool. But um, I'm kind of curious to see how things play out when you can't be surprised anymore, right? Uh, already, they've run directly towards each other's town centers. And Classic Pro is going to attack these goats. Margugu didn't want to garrison originally because he didn't have many villagers to shoot arrows there. And now Margugu's down two goats. Probably not the biggest deal when you've when you've got the, the fish here, but... Let me tell you, I was thinking about how I felt people would approach this. Uh, because like I said, I, I, I debated signing up for this tournament myself. And I'm still kind of on the fence. I think the best players, okay... The very best players are going to be as greedy as possible with their economy and keep looking over to see what form of aggression their opponent is going to go for and then counter it. On this map, you might want to have a little bit more scout presence because you can actually use your scouts to defend from the opponent's scouts. But yeah, that's how I think the best players are going to play um, some games in this in an all visible setting now classic pro hasn't gone for any fishing ships he, he just used the dock and he's on the way up already and margugu has two fishing ships i don't know if these guys really have build orders designed for this yet because they this is just the early stages of this tourney but classic pro being up this fast is insane so there is a difference between these two even though they have the same options and it's all visible People are asking who won Doubt versus ACCM. I'm not going to say it because... Well, chat already said it, but... Uh, I would suggest you watch the VOD. I just... There might be some people who are planning on watching the VOD later, which is why I didn't want to spoil it, but... Uh, it was a good series. Food income is going to be insane here for both, but a 90-second difference in the uptimes here. Wow. So, Classic Pro up faster... Classic Pro will go for Scouts. Scouts can kill the fish. Scouts can kill the bills. And again, it's all visible, though. So Margugu can, like, look over here. Even though it doesn't work for <laughs> for Capture Age, which is weird. He can look over here and see that there's going to be Scouts from the opponent. And Classic Pro can see that Margugu is making his barracks and that Margugu might not be up yet. Okay, so I think... Ring around the rosy. I think uh, walling in your woodline would make sense if you're Margugu. Now, pre-walling would still make sense for me, but then again, you know if your opponent's going to be coming towards you, so you have a lot of time to react. I wonder if we'll see mills or docks for Classic Pro over here. I mean, the dock... Is, is just a more expensive mill at this point. Okay. 
scouts and, and villagers are engaging. Pretty soon, we're going to see Margugu in the next stage. And it's going to be scouts from him as well. So obviously, immediately going to add some spearmen too. Oh, it's also not round of 16. We have to say show match here. So show match. Perfect. Oh, a demo from Margugu. Well, okay, so already we have to talk about it, right? The thing about the demo is you normally surprise your opponent, but the second Classic Pro sees a flag here, he's never going to go anywhere near this this water area. But Margugu's feeling like he's under some pressure because of all the military coming forward, and he wants something extra. Sees the scouts coming over, immediately drops the house walls. And now he's just got a demo that Classic Pro can see. If I'm playing this show match, I, t I ping that. And I let Margugu know that I see that. I think that would be hilarious. The spearman's there to, to thwart the attack. And here we have villager spearman running around. We have our first kill of the game. Let's go. Stable as well for, for uh, Margugu. Another stable, that is. So he wants to make more scouts. Classic Pro used his weak scout against the demo. That was actually really smart. That was really smart. And then there's only one spear here. So he goes in, and now there's no demo anymore. And all because he could see that, and he took advantage of it, he gets some kills. Kills the fishing ships. He didn't have fishing ships this whole time, of course. Margugu also has a sieve with very cheap bills. Classic Pro did drop a mill, multiple mills on more fish. So I expect that to continue here. But now Margugu is no gold. So he wants to go for fletching later. He won't have the gold for that. He'll have to mine it. If he wants to go for bloodlines for the scouts, he has to mine 100 gold instead of 50. Finally, a tournament that nerfs Byzantines. <laughs> That's true. The Town Watch and Town Patrol... Having that for free is useless now because everything's always visible. I love that. I've been, been waiting for Byzantines to struggle in a tournament. Okay, a couple hits there from Margugu. He does have seven spears. I think it makes sense for Margugu to defend with spears and then go out and attack with scouts. But the scouts can always outmaneuver your spears. It gets tricky. We do see both players mining gold right now, so they're thinking about bloodlines for the scouts. Or archers, but I would say it's probably just bloodlines for the scouts. Or castle age, even. And there's a range now for Margugu. So, yeah, he might be thinking about you know, mixing in some archers against the spears. Things are always visible in this event. This is a little show match to promote it. So far, it's been very visible. It's it's also a little confusing because there's another tournament that's been hosted called Visible Cup, which is Hidden Cup, but the names aren't hidden. But, ooh, things might have been visible. But Classic Pro still gets spotted there. Nice job there from Margugu. Actually, not the best job. He's currently distracted. Mikering here. And he's got to be careful. This is dangerous. Dangerous for Margugu. You got to run to that TC, dude. You're crazy, man. Crazy, man. What are you doing? Well, he's killing villagers over here is what he's doing. And he's still trying to defend here. Will take some losses. Nice job from Classic Pro. Bloodlines on the scouts paying off big time. I'm really surprised that we're seeing Margugu go for range units right now. It feels like full scouts is the way to go. And he loses both those villagers on the farms as he's micering here. But he did. He was killing some villagers here. Hmm. Notice there's no farms for Classic Pro. Let's see how much food is left on the fish. Can I double click all the fish? It's tough because there's different kinds. But it says there's 5,000 food remaining on the fish. So yeah, fishing is insane. Nice farms, Margugu. Quality stuff here, bro. All the casting with me in Hidden Cup is really rubbed off, I see. Margugu reacts. You know what's weird? If I wouldn't have told you, do you guys think that you would have picked up on the fact that they can see everything? 
I don't think it would have been that obvious, right? I I'm guessing because we're so used to players kind of having a sense and having the scouting anyways. It, if you really think about it, the way this has played out, there's only been a couple instances where it's been clear that they know where the opponent is, but... Someone in chat says Margugu is dead. Well, he's going to be later to Castlage. And that's going to be a problem against the Magyars. Does have lots of scouts himself, though. And he will have bloodlines in a moment. Like, his army will be stronger for the next couple minutes. He's got to use those minutes wisely. Hmm. I really like the map pool for this tourney. I should sign up if I still can. Even if it's all visible. I don't know. This is this is how my brain works. Like, ah, oh, I, I can't I can't commit so much time to playing this game. I gotta just keep focusing on content and do other things with my life. Then I'm like, I wanna sign up for 16 tournaments. I got 16 video ideas, and we're still behind on that legend video. <laughs> Sign-up's close tonight, so there's still time. Ooh, I have to make the decision today? Oh, that's too much pressure. I gotta see. I gotta see when I when I have to play. Because like I said, I am I am home with family this upcoming week. Scouts galore. Faster cast age for Classic Pro. And I gotta agree with Bastard Men here. It's looking pretty bad for Classic Pro. Uh, sorry, not for Classic Pro, for uh, for Margugu. There's something satisfying about this Lumber Camp, though. And it's nice that Classic Pro can also appreciate this. This is very kind of Margugu. It's just something about them chopping from all angles that looks very nice. But now he's making a new Lumber Camp for efficiency, which of course is going to ruin that. Okay, Classic Pro will know right now that Margugu is coming towards his base. And he's got some spears around. He hits Castle Age, instantly gets Iron Casting, like have and Husbandry. And it's important he gets kills now because pretty soon, Hindustani player can make camels. A demo queued up for Margugu, but I don't think that's going to do it. The house wall won't work out. You cannot live here, villagers. And when Light Cav comes in, engagements are going to be brutal. And that's exactly what it is. Margugu still hasn't found a fight on the other side. And Classic Pro is going to fight this off and just kill these before their pikemen. Meanwhile, tracking this with Light Cav. Getting big fights. And this looks like this is going to be Classic Pro's game, guys. It's killed so many vills. And it's just been really tough for Margugu. Like, Margugu was just later to feudal and never really got solid counterattacks in. He, the counterattacks he did have... He was made to pay for being there, right? As he was getting some kills, Classic Pro was then like, oh, you don't have army at your base then. Light Cav finding the kills. Margugu getting flattened by the Light Cav. And this is enough to maybe won't think someone is going to be tapping out. But when you have the Hindustani camels, you have belief. Unfortunately, there's still pikes. And there's our spears rather and there's a lot of attack there too we now see second tc from classic pro tough day for margugu did margugu play oh margugu played in sudden death earlier today as well and got 3 0 that's true against vinchester i saw um i saw game one which was the hideout game I'm going to assume that Vinchester just held his forward castle and that I didn't see the other games. 15 villager lead for Classic Pro, and that will continue to grow. And he's finding even more kills. Happy to take this fight because he's got spears in the mix. Margugu trying his best, using the market like a madman. But Margugu is dead. And Margugu paniqued. And called the GG. Did create similar amounts of scouts these game, these two. But uh, for Classic Pro, he just got to the scout number a little bit faster. It felt like the fishing ship edition there from Margugu was kind of the difference. Like, he basically chopped a lot more wood and had less on food so we could get the fish to get food long term. But the villagers on food seems like the easy play here. But that's something, like, 
you only figure out if you play the map a lot and it's just a show match so it might not be something that, that he realized but yeah there's just fish everywhere pretty cool map concepts honestly because like you in order to take advantage of the fish have your villagers very exposed so it should always be a very aggressive very army heavy map um more so than even like land madness or something which people normally think of as an army aggressive map so uh score one zil one nil excuse me here for classic pro classic pro wins and uh two to one or two and a half to one kd the res collected was actually close but it was just the food and the gold collected for classic pro which was perfect all right so catching up to live time this is all visible they know exactly where the opponent is and wow we missed a lot <laughs> we missed a lot and margugu lost his elephant wait no classic pro lost his elephant i got it wrong okay so this is going to be crazy folks i didn't realize they'd already started the game looks like we're we're near live time at this point and the only unit that went down was a villager for margugu but now there's going to be a villager for classic pro that's going to go down as well to the eagle uh goths for classic pro looms research researches instantly so there is that but he's had a minute of tc idle time and on socotra if lo you lose your elephant you are usually dead i can't remember a single game where someone lost their elephant on socotra and won because you only get one of them his hunt was also lamed so classic pro has to drop a mill here to try and take as much hunt as he can from that and classic pro might be thinking if I fight him here, he can't take food. Whereas like, he's got all this food income. And still has the... The goats also starts with a llama with the Incas. So. Time to use the boxing emote if you have it, guys. Because um, that's what we're seeing here. Peak Age of Empires 2. Mark, who has got a weak villain there? But I guess Classic Pro doesn't realize. Normally you want to send those weak villagers home. And then this villager... Will she survive? Quick walls. Nice. Margugu does lose that vill. Like, Classic Pro is no food. Like, cl Classic Pro basically cannot continue to produce villagers. This game... First name Joe, last name over. Could be wrong, of course. But, like... This is just bad. <laughs> this is a bad spot. He's he's behind by 300 resources collected, and he's not collecting food underneath his TC. <laughs> all the fresh vills from Margugu, all the fresh meat, are going to come party, are going to come box. And the eagle's still alive as well to be able to attack and block. And Margugu will know, because he can look... He could see everything. He will know how big of a lead he has. And another villager goes down. Now it's 18 villagers to 13. And Margugu just has Classic Pro outnumbered. And should probably just continue to, to focus on the food. That would be the best play here. Five years ago, you went on a rant about how Eagle Scouts should have the same line of sight as Scout Cav. Finally, a tourney that fixes that. Well, they did actually fix it, small head. I think in Dark Age... No, no, no. What it was, I think Eagles had plus two line of sight over a scout in Dark Age. And now I think it's just plus one. So they did actually nerf it per my... Uh, I don't know if it was because of my ranting, but it was feedback that I had given to the devs on DE. And I actually forget now. I forget if it's the same, but I think it, it might just be one more. But yeah, you're right. Line of sight bonus is like Mongol line of sight bonus. Completely useless here. Margugu continues to box. Again. This is peak Age of Empires. This is the type of Age of Empires content that you prefer. If you disagree with that, you're just wrong. This is how the game should be played. Peak Age of Empires. We got berries coming in from Margugu. He still has a goat to finish. Look at all the weak vills there. Margugu. 23 vills. It is 15 for Classic Pro. Classic Pro will never make it to Feudal Age. That is my prediction. Look how weak Classic Pro's vills are as well. Oh, God. It might take a while for Margugu to make it to Feudal as well, to be honest. 
Like, I think both players are definitely going to need to farm. But, yeah, I mean, Margugu could just continue this cycle of sending the fresh meat forward. Margugu! This is under your TC, Margugu! Bro! Okay, he deserves to lose. Admins, I'm pretty sure that's in the rules, right? Who was that? He was distracted. He never expected. I like how Classic Pro thought, ah, oh, it's worth a shot. Never expected Classic Pro to try that. Stay humble. Oh, God. Okay. Well, the Classic Pro feels like he's very dead. It's very likely that Margugu, because of the elephant, is on the way to feudal. So, in feudal age, he can't deal with military. So, we're just going to see more villagers brought to the boxing ring now. Again, 27 vils against 19 right now. Zero seconds of TC idle time for Margugu is very impressive. Like, I know that he's had the resources, so he has the means for that. But still, that that is great, great work from him to multitask in what is a messy game. Classic Pro's Vils are not going to want to box. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, is a, that is a problematic group right there. Yeah, these guys are traumatized as well, I imagine. And Margu Margugu continues to box. And he just, he always has the fresh meat. Also, he seems better at the Vil fighting than, than Classic Pro. Like, he, he seems to be very consistent with it. Oh, come on, Margugu. Go to the berries. Go, 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 go. It's going to be a feast. <laughs> oh, 179 HP out of a potential 480. Oh no, Margugu found them. No! <laughs> it's a slaughter. <laughs> oh god. And the GG's called, and Classic Pro drops the smiley face, and yeah. A funny game. Margugu will not complain about that, especially because I think there's money on the line here. But really, rule number one of Socotra is bring in your elephant fast. And Classic Pro didn't do that, and Margugu stole it. And there's just so little food to go around on Socotra. If you lose your elephant, you're normally in trouble. I like how Margugu did Vilwar, though. Like, Vilwaring basically makes it so the opponent's villagers can't collect resources. They have to fight you back. And if they can't collect resources, when they already are down 400 food, they're never making it to feudal. So 1-1 one, one here in the show match. Margugu gets a win on the board here on Socotra. Oh, God, guys. Okay, so let's start this over, okay? Because this is border dispute. They have no spec delay, so we just missed, like, the first 30 seconds, and this is what happened. Hold on! Hold on! Before we start, can we appreciate this? This right here guarantees that Classic Pro will lose this game. Look at this. Classic Pro is going to lose this game. He's got a big L right next to his TC. He's screwed. He is screwed. Nature is against him. All right. Well, big L for Classic Pro. We'll cast the game anyways, I guess. I mean, and the way this works, guys, is everything's visible here in this tournament. So the game starts. They see everything. And there's four boars in the middle. And so they're just going to go for him. And Margugu's going to shoot two. He's going to bring it towards his TC. And then Classic Pro's going to shoot two. But... It's a bit of a shame we already know that Classic Pro is going to lose. I guess we'll watch the game anyways. This is not easy to do. It's easy to lose a Vil here or lose a Boar. You do not want those Boars to go back to the middle. A Classic Pro. Ooh, he's using the Classic technique where you just shoot one on occasion and then just re-garrison. This is a bit of a dangerous game to play. But if you could do it, do it. Margugu doing a similar thing here. It's Lithuanians for Margugu. It is Bohemians for Classic Pro. If you moved the... Uh, sorry, if you missed the previous game, Margugu won by villager rushing. And I could easily see him wanting to villager rush here as well. Because they're very close together. And you get to know what the opponent is doing and where they are. Look at Margugu. He's blocking the board to keep it underneath his TC. And now he's got a vill here for some reason. And now he's got a vill there. And now he's going to shoot it. And oh god. Oh god, he panicked! 
Oh, no, and Classic Pro. Oh, Classic Pro's gonna love this. Margugu has a weak scout now because he wanted to snag the boar. See, this is why I just kill them both, right? I get, like, trying to, like, do, you know, lessen some of the decay. Margugu says, freaking misclick. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys heard about the next show match that's happening today. It is going to be free be freaking misclick versus freaking Andy. It's a freaking showdown. <laughs> They're two teammates, actually. Uh, they played on the same team. Freaking misclick just isn't very well known. So Scout's obviously a bit stronger for Classic Pro now because of that. I think it's funny that if you make a mistake, you're, you're, the opponent can see it. I wonder if you become a little bit more embarrassed if there's any mistakes. I, I'm disappointed by the lack of trash talk. I I know this is serious. There's probably some money on the line. These guys are, are better than me, but I guess Classic Pro's never been much of a chatter, but I would be uh, signaling this bore and being like, nice job. Maybe I should play this tournament just so I could trash talk my opponent. I just think that'd be so funny. You could see everything. Lithuanians do start with the extra food in the bank. So the extra food in the bank gives you that, that nice little boost of feudal age. Typically, we also have the zebra being pushed in. It's going to be the same here for Classic Pro. Uh, wood, pretty close to the TCs. Stone and gold is behind the TCs. I wonder if you could go for a risky fast castle. The berries are back there. Both players are going to mill their berries. Uh, in theory, like, I mean, the berries are always going to be exposed. In theory, you could wall in a little egg shape to protect your gold and your wood pretty well. But I think going fast castle is just too risky when they can see everything here. How do you do strategies here if it's all visible? Well, you won't do anything that surprises your opponent. So I think you have to go for the best possible opening. You don't go for anything that's mind games. I think that you could just base your strategy around what you see from your opponent, right? So like right now, if you see your opponent go to gold, you know it's probably archers. If your opponent doesn't go to gold, it's probably scouts. So you just, you kind of play adaptive based on what your opponent's doing. Are you behind live time? I might be actually. Yeah, 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 I am. I'm catching up now. I just didn't want to like speed through the start, but we can speed through this period. Sorry. Yeah, worried about food decay on two boars and then shoots four zebra at the same time. Yeah. That, that's a good point. <laughs> I'm disappointed by the lack of trash talk in AOE at the high level in general. Can you imagine how cool it would be if Viper came out and said, I'm a wreck your face, Hera? And Hera's like, all like, I eat snake for breakfast, like WWE stars. I disagree. I... I think, like, there's a difference between banter and trash talk. I don't want trash talk. I like banter, right? Um, the problem with, with those types of things is there's always a lion. And it's very, you know, people so easily cross that line. I, I like good banter, but actual trash talk where it's like... So, like, what you're describing to me is, like, fake trash talk. Like, you know, that seems more like banter to me. I don't know. I guess there's kind of a difference. All right. So we're going to have spears and skirms here. Now, uh, Margugu has faster spears and has faster skirms. So Classic Pro has kind of an uphill battle here. And Margugu got the first kill. I mean, going spear skirm with Lithuanians is already a really nice strat. It's kind of tricky to counter. There's no easy counter to it in Feudal Age. And even long term, like, Bohemians would... I guess they'd want to go Siege against this. Siege or, like, Knights or something like that. Someone says, I come from the Rust community. I've got all the toxicity I can handle. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's wild. Like, I'll play some other games. It's wild the way people chat. I just can't... It blows my mind. Like, I mean, I, I played, like... I remember the early all online days, right? Like the first time you got a headset for your Xbox or PlayStation. You guys remember what some of those Call of Duty lobbies and whatnot were like? 
some of the things that were said. Some of the things that maybe we said before we knew any better. But like, um, I, uh, I played the new Call of Duty recently and, uh, like everyone in this lobby of like 20 or 30 players had their freaking mics on and I didn't know how to turn it off because I suck. And I just was like, why? Why do people talk like this? <laughs> I don't understand. Like, <laughs> I guess like I also treat other games with so little importance compared to age. And that and those guys are like, that's their game. So they're like, this is my life. This is it. You know, um, so maybe that's why people can get so upset and emotional and weird. And like you got dudes bragging and I'm just like, dude, you're not. I guarantee you're not that good because <laughs> you're playing with me right now. Um. But yeah, anyways, um, I don't know where I'm going with this. But yeah, I, I like age. Um, I do like it when players chat, though. Like, you know, I, I do like, especially now that everything's all visible, there's a lot of micro involved, but it would be fun to maybe see a little bit of chatter from time to time. So anyways, we've got a Skirmore. Exciting times. Um, and Margugu is, is dominating Classic Pro here. Classic Pro continues to lose skirm after skirm after skirm after skirm. And both players continue to make skirm after skirm after skirm after skirm. Now, Margugu can look and see there's no stable. So he knows that his opponent is not going to be able to counter this. Whereas in a normal game, you might not dive because you'd be worried about a stable in scouts. But there is no stable in scouts. And Classic Pro might not add stable in scouts. Because if he adds this stable in scouts, his opponent can see it and just add something to counter that, so. It does really feel like Margugu just snowballing his advantage more and more right now. Yeah, I never played... Some of the games that people would consider to be extremely toxic, I never really played. Like, what? which which online community would you say is, has been... has given you the worst experience, guys? Not trying to call any communities out or anything like that. I'm just, I'm just curious. Okay, a lot of people say League, CS. Yeah, that makes sense. Dota. Okay. Yeah, the top three I've heard has been like CS, Dota, and League. Those are also extremely popular games, so that would make sense. Any MOBA. Okay. Well, Margugu's on gold now. And Margugu is going to transition to the next stage. And Margugu is just winning the Skirm War. And is going to be up to Castle Age faster. And then it would make sense from him to maybe add a stable and click up. I find it really difficult to say what Classic Pro is going to do from this point. I mean, if he does counterattack, he's counterattacking with Skirms, right? He's going to add Scouts. Okay, so at this point, there's the stable. At this point, Margugu should be able to look over there, know the stable's there. Sorry, there's actually no Fog of War for the players. Capture Age doesn't even work with it. But he sees this. And then he should add Spears, in theory, if he notices that. Team games are just toxic because there's always the possibility to blame your teammates for losing. People, I, I agree. Like, random team games... I, okay... Agree or disagree with this statement that I'm about to say, guys. That team games can, in general, be a little bit less inviting. Rage of Empires 2. But, but, but... The team game matchmaking and the way team games work in general for this game doesn't help matters. Um, I, It's one of those things I want to make a video on, but, like... I think that the way matchmaking works for age team games... And just, like, the lack of community features. Like, there's no way to, like, have in-game friends. If you have a good game, there's no easy way for you to, like, stay in touch with that person. It's just, like, the game ends, and then you're out there in the world, and then you still like, well, hopefully I get a teammate that that's good again. Like, the lack of a proper party system and the lack of proper in-game features, I think, doesn't help the team game experience. And I think that team games in general would be better for people if they added certain things so like it's so like i'm so tilted even saying these words it bothers me so much that in 2024 
we have to, if we do a team, if I do a team game with Dave, for example, when the game ends, I have to remake my party. What is that? The game's been out for five years. Like, why? Why am I remaking a party? That's wild to me. Anyways, Scouts and Skirms here from Classic Pro. And um, this is going to be something that gets cleared up by the Knights. Now, this is good aggression, right? right? Like, he needed something to give him some type of, you know, turnaround. But Margugu knew it was coming. And Margugu has the Knights. Knights are the perfect answer. He is Elite Skirm as well. And he is going to clear this. And still 90 seconds away from the next stage is Classic Pro. Hmm. There are games where you can say you want to continue to play with someone, I think. Oh, you mean like if you play a good game, it just lets you continue to party with them? Well, yeah, man. Like, I play other games sometimes. And if I, you know, there's ways to like click their name and like send them a friend request or, you know, invite them to a party or something like that. It's not possible with age, which is a bummer. So I, I just really, it, it feels like that should be prioritized. Uh, just like Classic Pro should have prioritized better micro in this game. And Margugu is up 2-1. Yeah, kind of a, a bland game, in all honesty. Just a skirm war. And Margugu outplayed him. And, you know, I wonder if the lack of counterplay from Classic Pro early in Feudal there was just because he doesn't feel like he can. Because Margugu can see this, so... All right, ladies and gents, welcome. We've got uh, Meatballs. I was just saying this is a classic map. I don't know why I said that weird. Sorry. This is an All Visible Cup show match, so the players can actually see each other. They can see everything. So what we are showing, the players can see as well. Basically, Meatballs is like a mini migration. And I guess when this map was created over 10 years ago, the original designer said, what do these islands look like? And he decided it looked like Meatballs. So... Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I assume that that is the case. We've got two meatballs and then a map to expand to elsewhere. Where typically it's like rather difficult to find golden stone out there. But now, of course, the players can see that. Now, what you could do is you could... Uh, you could go forward dock if you're either of them and try and compete for the opponent's water. It would almost be like houseboat if you know that map. Because there's just not many trees here. I think that's going to be the tricky thing. Is you're going to need to transport vills to chop trees. And then you're going to need to spend wood to defend your transport and defend your fish around your starting island here. Drooling says StarCraft 2 at the moment has two kids under 20-ish in the top five best players in the world. Yeah, there's always going to be younger players coming through to RTS. I just don't think it's going to be like the percentage of young players going to other games. Like, there's, there's quite a few players below the age of 20 right now in the top 20 in Age of Empires 2, even. And I was debating on making, like, videos where I was, like, you know, up-and-coming talents, whatever, Age of Empires 2. Um, so it is, you know, there there are younger players out there. Um, it's just, again, percentage-wise, maybe it'll take a lot of time to, to really see that, so... You should do old school versus new school. That would be interesting. Like, oh, the oldest players who are, like, top 100. Off the top of my head, I think Doubt's, like, 39 or 38. Tato's actually just a year or two younger than Doubt. Tato's actually much older than people think. Um, There is a player... It, it depends where the threshold is, right? Like, I would say... Let's say we do 2200 plus... Uh, Chris still plays from time to time, so he he and Doubt were like competing back and forth in the early 2000s. Capoch is up there as well. Obviously, he's a big name, but you do have some others as well. I think there's um, um, trying to think. Tato's 34. Okay, I'm trying to think. There's a uh, I think a Japanese player. I know Noboru's like mid 40s, but he's not really 2200 anymore. Yeah, it's an interesting topic for video. It requires some research. So, uh, so yeah. But there's a couple guys that 
when I when I've seen their Liquipedia profile, it surprised me how old they are. Yeah, like Cloud's been around forever. I guess like it depends when we make the video, right? If we don't make this video soon, pretty soon a lot of the big names I just mentioned are gonna be in their forties, right? <laughs> so pretty cool. Does Luca still play? No, Luca doesn't play anymore. Luca was a young talent in the past. But I haven't seen him play. I last time I saw Luca, Luca said, I'll be 2K3 easy, give me two weeks, and then I never saw him play the game again. So I don't know what happened. Okay, forward dock from Classic Pro. Now again, Margugu will see this. Um, so because it's all visible. And Margugu is very late up. He is Malay, so. He can recover here, but he's going to go two docks to defend himself. And they're running out of trees on their starting island and will need lumber camps. I think that's what Margugu did. Margugu is deciding to take the gold and the wood outside. Interesting. Why did Riyadh stop playing in tourneys? Uh, life got busy. I think he, he got a job. He had a girlfriend or fiance or wife or whatever. Um, so he just wanted better life balance and felt like, like, I he, I haven't seen him play in a year or two, but he just really felt like his kind of, his days of competing were over, which, which happens. It's understandable, especially when you have a great career and are pretty happy with it and things are changing, which, which they of course did with the game. Riot never gave me an impression, like... Some people really struggle to like hold on and they're like, I can do both. And then they slowly come to the conclusion that maybe they can't. Um, Riot never gave me the impression that that was the case for him. He was always just like, well, you know what? I've got good things going in life. I've had a good career. He never really tried to stick around competitive AV2. A lot of people here probably don't even know who Riot is, which is a shame because Riot was fantastic. He was, in he was insane. Top 10 player. Uh, in his day and had some like one of the few threats for like peak Viper back then So triple dock from Margugu against double dock from classic pro In theory Margugu should be able to stabilize here This is the wood line classic pros taking Margugu has three demos in queue uh, Margugu just shift clicking demos and the first one lands. And there's another demo coming in from Classic Pro. There's going to be another one coming out of the dock from Margugu who needs to keep his ships spread out here. Margugu backs away. And of course, you're not going to be surprised by a demo when everything's visible here. So, Salad North, thanks again for gifting yet another sub this week, man. But there's no threat to Classic Pro side. And Classic Pro. You know, what's been a bit interesting here is if if it was another map, you would want to add farms, but he's actually transporting so many bills. Can't really do that. Where was he taking gold? I guess he was walking back and forth to get the gold. Oh, that's interesting. It's pretty inefficient. Gonna gift one sub every day you stream from now on, smiley face. Not only is that an, a bold commitment, that's that's unnecessary. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Demos, fires. I'm just waiting for that big demo. Again, they can see it. It is visible. By the way, guys... I, there's this weird bug with Twitch. I may go live for like two minutes on my days off and just go right back offline. It, it, it's a weird thing. I just got an email from them where they said I might not be able to go live some days. So the days I'm typically off, I'm just going to be on real quick. Just for like five minutes, two minutes, and then poof, just just head off for the day. Just just for no particular reason. Right? Uh, looks like the production from our Gugu's paid off here. <laughs> And villagers are exposed. Fires go down. Now this might be time for Margugu to consider sneaking a dock over to this side. That would make sense. 
I'd love to see a villager or two head over there to do that. And Markugu is now ahead on water. He will be able to see that Classic Pro is adding the barracks. And Margugu should be able to prep for whatever comes after that with his own buildings here. Evan says, I will gift one sub every day. T90 streams a new ring, nothing community game. Okay, well, that's just... Come on. That's just not worth it. <laughs> we'll do ring nothing again at some point, but it'll be special. So I am like really surprised at how long it's taking Margugu to look over here and realize this. His opponent's going to have archers, and now he's going to try and wall. His scout is weak. This definitely is a bit late, I would say. The Classic Pro hasn't given up here either, by the way. So I don't know. Maybe Margugu just happy to judge this. Yeah, it looks like he's judged it pretty nicely, actually. Happy to wait. Still close to taking down the dock. Demo comes in for Margugu. It's half decent, but a demo landing from Classic Pro means he can still stay here. And Classic Pro's docks will stay up. Margugu will wall up. And Margugu still needs to deal with this pesky, pesky threat from Classic Pro here. Scout went down for Margugu. Margugu under pressure. Margugu using the market. I wonder what percentage of games are players selling their stone with the market these days. Higher percentage than ever, I would guess. But like, what, what percentage of 1v1 games over the rating of 2k are players even making a market in Feudal? That's a completely different step. But then also selling that stone. Feels like players... In the past, it was like, no, I need the stone for TCs. These days, play, people are like, well, I'll just buy it back later. And it's smart. You absolutely should do it to hit the timings. Especially in a messy game. Classic Pro is just going to take down the walls so the archers can come in. I think Classic Pro just needs to commit here if he can. If he can get through. He's, he's trying. But then there might be a demo. The archers are through. Ooh. That, that's rough for Margugu. So he chose not to go for an archer range himself. He didn't have loom! No loom! Obviously, War Galley upgrade is probably his goal now. So he can just win water, but he's got two archers to deal with. This is great for Classic Pro. Classic Pro given a lifeline by Margugu here, with Margugu never adding an archer range of his own. A War Galley upgrade will come in for Margugu. He'll have... Quite a few ships headed over here. He might end up clearing these docks. But he's losing some vills. And this is just, it, you know, a bit sloppy here. Meanwhile, Classic Pro still has docks and fishing ships. He's even fish trapping here. Yeah, I think what I would have liked to have seen from Margugu is a dock over on the, the side of Classic Pro. Because if you're streaming fires into his eco right now, those fishing ships would be denied. Oh, this is so annoying. <laughs> I think Margugu might make a knight here. An elephant! That's funny. Well, elephant forward would be really good. He can see that's open. Elephant here would be really nice. Right into the wood line. That would be smart. Don't even use it to defend. Classic pro needs to multitask. Archers are still so weak, but Classic Pro continues to nerd out. I think Margugu is making a run for it to try and get a dock down so we can do exactly what I said. So there he goes. Classic Pro's got quite a few fishing ships. Classic Pro's lost not all of his docks, but most of his docks here. And there go the Vills. Can Classic Pro deny this? At the very least, Classic Pro could preemptively make ships here. But he has to focus on... He's still nerding out with these two archers. And then he's trying to defend from the elephants here. So it, it's a lot to ask of him. And Doc is going to go up here. Three docks from Margugu. <laughs> Whoa, man. I mean, that's amazing. With all the fishing eco that's here, that's just amazing. And Classic Pro was very late to react and make Navy. 
Hmm. You know, my impression was that it was going to be, like, easy. Again, quote-unquote easy. That it was going to be easy to, like, know what your opponent was going to do and react to it. But you still got to play the game. Right? You still have to adapt. You still have to, you know, there's still a lot of skill elements, so... That's why I was really curious about this. Again, I was debating if I if I have time with whatever the schedule is for the event. I was debating on like, do I play in this, for example? But in my impression, this changed a little bit. That you know, the complicated complicated maps still are going to lead to some really exciting games. This is something Classic Pro didn't pre-wall at all. Maybe he forgot about his units over there. And he did not have the fire galley production he would have wanted initially. Bargugu blocking off the units so the elephants can maybe feast. The villagers need to find a transport ship. But, Classic Pro. He does have ships to defend. Does hold the line for now. Yeah, just because you can see it coming doesn't mean you can stop it exactly. This is really good. That's smart thinking. Stonewall. And then go for the Lumber Camp. Wow, so... Classic Pro's out of stone. By the way, I love how Margugu is farming here. If you're going to farm anywhere, you want to be farming here. Farming here doesn't make sense. Because you're running out of resources here. This is your best farming area. Monks is a great idea. I like the decision to go for Monks for Classic Pro. And he's trying to stabilize now. Monks can help against the ships as well. And Margugu is going to add his own monks from that monastery. Sterling says, as blue, wouldn't you just want to push yellow back to their island and then expand? Um, I mean, he's trying, he's trying his best to... When you have three docks, you need to try and take advantage of that. Because you can always surprise with a sneaky demo. And then you're just... You're one extra fire away from killing those fishing ships and denying all the transport. So the water is really important because all these villagers for Classic Pro need to go somewhere. So I like what Margugu's doing. He's actually going to go... He went Atonement, and he's going to try and even convert the monks from Classic Pro here. But he doesn't actually have a ton on gold right now. If you play the tournament, would you live stream your games? Uh, probably not. I don't know. Um, like I said, I when it comes to gameplay, I pretty much just am just not planning on playing on stream now that I'm back on Twitch. But that might change. I think the exception would be like community games or T90 Trolls, which I'm bringing back. Nice job from Classic Pro. Really nice job. I thought Classic Pro was going to die. The fact that he's held on and even has the eco lead is so impressive. And he's on three town centers, too. And he's also getting atonement so he can convert his opponent's monks. Sick. And he's taking down the docks and everything. Wow. But yeah, for the time being, I don't even have a scene set up because I, I changed my UI. So like my minimap and basically I have my resources, and my population next to the minimap. And my minimap's bigger now. And so when I stream, I obviously have scenes that have certain things that, like, make it look nice. So I'm, I'm having that. We're, we're reworking that right now. So that's another reason why I'm not doing any gameplay stuff on streams for the time being. Margugu's just got one dock left. Seems unlikely he's going to accomplish much there. He's just now dropping the second TC. Feels like he was late to that, but he was being really aggressive. And with that food count, he might be tempted to maybe go for some type of fast stint. But as I say that, he drops even another TC. Both players are going to have atonement. And we even have a devotion right now from Margugu. But he's got two monks. It doesn't feel like the monk number is that, that insane. Also, at some point, I think Classic Pro sold all of his stone. To stabilize. Look, they both sold most of their stone. That's crazy. Something I'm noticing is though Margugu is transporting, uh, like he is expanding in an area where there's not a lot of resources, whereas the right side has a lot of the, the golden stone. So I think I prefer Classic Pro's position if this game goes late just because of that. 
monk here gets killed by an elephant, which is a little embarrassing if you're classic pro. And you, you might want to meet, leave with these ships. Sorry, I can't speak here if you're classic pro. Oh, he actually is killing the monks, though. Ooh, that was nice. He actually moved the one ship that was being converted away. That's high level stuff. He's trying it again. But since Margugu has devotion, he should be able to convert with the monks a bit faster. But then he can just convert the monks back. And we see a stable for Classic Pro. He's probably going to consider the like have upgrade. You know which one is being converted based on the direction the monk is looking. And yeah, they're both like in the same general vicinity, but you can tell if you're really paying attention. So like right now, if this monk was converting, it would likely be like the middle ship, right? Because it's looking towards the middle ship. So you also, if you don't know 100%, you can move the units around and the monk will change directions as well. So you can determine mid-conversion what's happening. You'll see it a lot where like if people, let's say someone has two knights, usually they'll still run away from one monk, but like... You just see them select one knight, click it away, and if the monk moves, they know that the, the knight that's moving away is the one that's being converted. If it doesn't move, they know that the other knight that's still moving directly towards the monk is going to be converted. Does that make sense? Okay, so crazy monk numbers here from Margugu. Res Collect is pretty close, but Classic Pro has pulled ahead. It was I like e dead even at one point. And... Classic Pro going to drop ranges. Now, I wonder if dropping them far away actually makes sense now that things are all visible. In a normal game, you want to drop them on the front because of the distance. But now it's like, with everything being all visible, you might want to build your buildings out of position because they're probably not going to scan over there as much as they're going to look here. Margugu is going to click Imp very quickly, being the Malay. So maybe he clicks later, but he will arrive faster, and he wants to drop a castle here. There is no stone being mined right now by Classic Pro. Is there even any stone? Uh, there is stone. Yeah, of course. Hmm. Yo, Calzone. Thank you. Also, Sergeant Mez. Thank you. Sorry I missed you. Who's your man? Paffy. Thank you, guys. What is ABC? It's all visible cup. So everything is visible. Everything we are seeing, the players see as well. That's what this is a show match for. We do have a command for it now if you wanted to, like, sign up. I don't know what the ELO cutoff is, but apparently the sign-up's closed tonight. Maps are interesting. I'll tell you what, guys. As long as my trip home to family doesn't screw up with the schedule, I will sign up for this tourney, and I can at the very least talk about my experiences with you guys. But I think it starts next week, which, if it does, I will be gone for a bit. But the map the map pool's pretty interesting. The, the games are... The, the games could maybe still teach me some things, you know? Forest Dump! Welcome back for the three months! For, good old Forest Dump. Well, it's been great to see the resubs, guys, after uh, Hidden Cup. It's been about a month now. And the sub count stayed up there, and uh, it, it's motivating to see that. Thank you. One day this past week, I went live and lost 3,000 subs. <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> Forgot Hidden Cup happened a month ago. <laughs> Arbalest now for Classic Pro. It was mainly Monks for Margugu, but his castle holds this position. So the castle means the Arbalest can't really go anywhere for Classic Pro. And it gives him time for Skirms. And now he's dropping a Dock. Which means he could go full water here. Ooh, we could even see the unique tech. We could see Thalassocracy, so the Dock's Fire Arrow is too sick. Fires coming out now from Classic Pro. It might make sense for Classic Pro to also try and dock here. He is adding cannon galleons. 
So he could actually see and check to see the skirm upgrades here from Margugu, but it feels like Margugu's got just enough anyways. Still has skirms. Uh, it's dropping stone walls. Maybe he doesn't have enough, actually. Oh, he doesn't have enough. The skirms are so poorly upgraded. No ballistics, no armor, no bracer, and the arbs go right through. That is annoying for Margugu. Oh, this is a ton of damage from these arbalists. Oh, man, so many of the skirms dying. Obviously, the upgrades are gonna come in. That's something he's focusing on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Cannon Galleons. Uh-oh. Will they get converted? Plastic Pro. No! No! <laughs> no! Don't give him the Cannon Galleons and the Fires. No! Oh, God. Okay. Man, every time I see Cannon Galleons in tournaments these days, it feels like they're always getting converted. It's now Margu they're Margugu's Cannon Galleons. Still like how Classic Pro camped this production for a bit. Look at how many skirms Margugu has queued up. He has 30 skirms in queue out of three ranges. He's definitely panicking a little bit. Classic Pro is going to make his own skirms, and he's even getting ship right. Wow. I think it's smart, though, guys. Like, Navy can do a lot here. If you had full naval control on the edge of Margugu's area, Margugu's screwed. And Margugu is out of gold now. Actually, that's not true. He has these two. But as long as Classic Pro holds this position, he wins. Bombard Cannon snipes the trap. Bombard Cannon does not get converted. The monks from Margugu are going to go down as well. This is looking better and better for Classic Pro. Classic Pro already has Bracer and Chemistry for the Skirms. That'll apply to Galleons too. But right now, he's still just working with Fires. Margugu's struggling. This is a relatable situation now. Where you're like, okay, keep making skirms. Keep making skirms. And you don't realize that your three ranges have 50 units in queue. And that you could unqueue some of those and make more archer ranges to get skirms out faster. And so maybe you realize that. Maybe you add more ranges. Maybe you figure that out in time. And then by the time you get that mass, your opponent has already switched on to that next thing, which is stables. And that's what Classic Pro is focusing heavily on right now. Why did Yellow delete his TC? Because you have to ferry the villagers across, and it's extremely annoying. We had the same from Margugu. I think that was probably smart from both of them. They have TCs elsewhere. We missed a big shot with the Bombar Cannons. Look at the text coming in for Classic Pro. Dock text, stable text, blacksmith text. I think if he gets light calf here, Margugu's dead. Just do not want to lose these cannons right now if you're Classic Pro. Careful. Margugu will hop out of that castle aiming for conversions every single time. Now, in theory, Margugu can see this. There he converts a cannon. In theory, he can see this and he could prep the Halbline. But that is only in theory because they are still fighting and and battling. And yeah, I think he noticed it. Yeah, he, now he's going to add the barracks. Pretty natural timing to add the barracks even if you can't see it. Sorry, the Fog of War that I'm showing here is actually not what they see in-game. They see everything. It's just Capture Age isn't used to accommodating that. <laughs> and I'm used to toggling on Fog of War, so... <laughs> I find it interesting that Classic Pro hasn't had a castle this entire time. It feels like getting to a castle is normally a pretty big deal. And he has just not been mining stone. He actually has more skirms than Margugu has right now. And Margugu's had like 40 skirms in queue forever. Upgrades are the same. Of course, Margugu doesn't have any cannons though. And the Hussars should start coming in now for Classic Pro. And I think this might be the end here for Margugu. He doesn't even have pikemen yet. He has so little access to gold. His population's still high, sure. But that's a lot of villagers, and those villagers are going to be picked off by the Hussars once the Hussars come in. Still feels like Classic Pro is almost being patient, like he doesn't want to remind Margugu that he has this, even though Margugu could look here and see it. And farms are going down. Mar Classic Pro's really stabilized here. If he had Trebs, this castle would be 
you know, down already. He has to be patient with the bomber cannons because Margugu keeps hopping in and out of the castle with monks. Why didn't Margugu sail to the south? Mm, I think the gold on the outside originally was right here. And so he, he wanted, when he needed to transport to the outside, he needed it ASAP. And so the gold, if you look at the minimap, Harry, is really awkward for him in the south. So initially he didn't want to go there. And it's just really awkward to, to choose to expand to the other side uh, long term. Halb upgrades in now. Castle's going to go down. Hussar Skirm is the plan here for Classic Pro. Let's see if Margugu can hold. Yo, Calzone, thanks. I appreciate that, man. Thanks for the sub. Glad to hear things are going well. I'll definitely keep it up. Halb production for Margugu. Halb and Skirm. Classic Pro. Normally, like, guys, normally what happens, you clear a position where your opponent had a castle, and you want to immediately drop your castle there. That's, that's like, the ideal. Um, he still doesn't mine stone, though, so he can't actually do that. But he is still camping the production, and he can get some Hussars through. But, I mean, Margugu still has gold, kind of. He's building up some barracks, maybe. Maybe he could be okay. Classic Pro is just, it's a slow crawl, and it's not quite as definitive simply because of the no castle thing, but he's going to win this game, I think. Dropping docks here is really smart. You can use ships to disrupt all of this economy. And Margugu is soon out of gold. This is Margugu's gold income. That and one relic, which is actually in one of these two monasteries. More Hussars will come in for Classic Pro. The Hussar, Skirm, Arbalest, Bomber combination is working. And Game 5 hype. Building. Just so much area to expand for Classic Pro over here. And he will know. If Margugu ever tries to go here, because it's all visible, he will know. He will see it. Hussars will go there. Margugu has probably felt... Ever since he saw the first wave of Hussars, that he was in trouble here. Stone mining! What are you mining stone with here, Classic Pro? Again, you can see it if you look, but I guess he's just so... He's so focused on the fights, right? There's actually not a ton of it. He's gonna run down here and take this gold. Still doesn't see that stone. Margugu's pop is a population where he will never resign. Right? You never want to resign in high-level AoE at 160 pop. Even if your position's brutal, you're still just like, 160 pop is not resign territory. 110, 100. Yeah, at that point, that's where you're going to want to call it, but his population's still decent. But uh, it is a slow death, but a sure death now for him. And now we're going to have Classic Pro take these fires out. Margugu doesn't notice this. And then we'll probably have cannon galleons from the side to take out even more buildings. And the position's just going to get so much worse. Really nice patient play from Classic Pro on this whole side here with water. He defended his water two separate sides. Uh, sorry, two separate times. And now it's time to this to perfection as well. Huggy, I'm, I'm trying to debate on if I sign up for this tourney. Like, I, I want to sign up for tourneys more, and especially tourneys where it's not going to have, like, a ton of top 10 talents, where I'm just going to get stomped, you know, and not learn anything. Um, but the all-visible thing initially kind of had me turned off because it's, like, a pretty critical part of the game and, and what I really like. The games have been good, though. The score's 2-2, and we'll see what game five's going to be. I think game five is on evacuation, actually. So it'll be on a hidden cup map. But yeah, uh, I said it all before, like Classic Pro. Well, first off, he brought the aggression to Margugu. Margugu was in Cast Lage so much faster. And the triple dock wasn't enough to kill Classic Pro. The, the faster imp from Margugu, the monks, none of it was enough to kill Classic Pro, who was just so consistent with his eco. And how he played the game there, good stuff. Now, there's the... The total KD, but economically, he just had access to so many more resources. And that's why it felt like it was just a matter of time there. So game five 
And this all visible cup little show match. Just a reminder, guys, signups close later on today if you wanted to play in this. And we're catching up to live time 2 2 between Classic Pro and Margugu. We've got Classic Pro playing as the Saracens, which does surprise me a little bit. And then we've got the Dravidians for Margugu, which has not surprised me at all. Now, again, they know exactly what their opponent is doing. So you remember the Great Cal War? The Great Cal meta of Hidden Cup? Well, now Margugu is going around. He's got cows on the way home. And he is trying to steal the cows that Classic Pro is sending home. <laughs> which which is hilarious to me. <laughs> um, I mean, this is a pretty big deal, right? Having that extra food underneath the TCs can be really helpful. And then usually we're also seeing docks which feels very natural with the Dravidians. The Saracens, the big thing you really think about is the flexibility with the market and archers. The other thing beyond that is you think about their camels, but there should be no use for extra HP camels here. You could argue even in, even like the Mamelukes, because, well, Mamelukes are a bit different, but um, Dravidians can't make knights. So having the extra camels... Doesn't feel like it's that nice of a bonus now. Dravidians getting the extra wood when they get to the next stage. Dravidians getting the extra pop space from their docks. Cheaper infantry upgrades. Faster firing skirms. All those things are really good. However, they can't make knights. And sometimes not having that mobility can be a problem. Nice hits for Margugu. Again, everything's visible. So they can look over here and see exactly where the opponent has docked. If they're docking what they're doing. But look at this zoo that Margugu's got. Classic Pro, it's not too bad. He's got a couple cows as well, so maybe we're exaggerating a little bit. Hmm. T90, here's some math. If you have 30k viewers and now you have 23k viewers, how many viewers did you lose? Okay, it's minus 7k. I get it. Yes. Great math. That's not a plus 7k joke there, okay? Not worthy of it. It looks like Margugu's gonna click up. Now, what Vasco was doing in Hidden Cup, which was fairly micro-intensive, but it seemed like a really smart play, was you would have galleys from the docks, not fires. You'd have a wall that would extend from the shoreline towards the TC, and then archers. So it was like, Full range unit, archer and galleys. Saracen galleys fire faster. Saracen archers destroy buildings pretty quick. So I feel like we could see that approach from Classic Pro here. We did not see either player take their uh, their boars, by the way. So eventually we'll probably see villagers come out here and mill. Setting. And maybe even build a lumber camp there. Yeah, Mark Gugu is going to chop that wood. All right. Will we see two docks? Will we see one dock? This is the question. Right now, it doesn't look like we're going to see an additional dock from Margugu. He doesn't have the wood for it. Classic Pro over to gold. Classic Pro building his second lumber camp here. Huh. I mean, you do get the wood much faster that way because you don't have to walk. But I guess in, in Margugu's case, walking is not that big a deal when you get the plus 200 wood when you get to the next stage. So... I don't know if you can see enemy building... No, no, no. You shouldn't be able to see enemy building foundations until they're built in all visible. That's a good question, though. That's a casting thing. You would only see anything they've started to construct. They do see everything. They see into your soul. Wahaha. Forward dock here from uh, Margugu. And then forward-ish dock from Classic Pro. And it is galleys. So it is two dock galleys. But basically, if I'm playing galleys here, I'm just looking over and being like, okay, is he made, has he made a barracks yet? Has he made a barracks yet? Because if he hasn't made a barracks, galleys is super easy to focus on. The second he starts to make a barracks and go archers, that's when you need to start to make a barracks and go skirms or archers or something. I do not agree with Margugu's decision here to go for fires. 
against Saracen galleys, and when you don't have... Okay, well, this is a bit better. I think that this ends up being better. Like, if you have the land pressure combined with fires, then it's better. No. That Because the micro is more difficult for Classic Pro. T90, do you think there's enough interest in a Classic Tourney? I'd love to see only AOC and earlier Civs tournament. There was a tournament last year called AOK Cup, which was only Age of Kings. Uh, it was a charity tournament. It was pretty high level. The the guy who won that tourney, um, pretty 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 knowledgeable fella. Um, he's 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 got many compliments about his micro, uh, his farms, his mustaches, uh, his mustache. Sorry, his uh, his archery range placement. He he's very very underrated player, I would say. Uh, but yeah, if you want to check Liquipedia for that, you can see how good of a run it was for him and. But unfortunately, it's like anytime that particular individual wins something, like, I don't know, Battle Royale, suddenly no one wants to do the settings anymore. It's like, okay, finally found something he's good at. Yeah, we're just going to not do it anymore. Yeah, I did. I did play in that tourney. Um, I don't know if there's ever been like an AOC cup. But that could be fun. Obviously, there, there weren't like as many big talents in that tournament. So that... I think ELO wise, I was the favorite going into it, but I did I did beat some good games. I had it was a good run. I'm happy with it. So kind of as expected, the galleys are doing what I thought they would do, right? Um, and, but now would be with this being all visible, where Classic Pro should look over here and realize, oh boy, he's got archers. So the, the galleys really better pay off here for Classic Pro because he's going to have archers and he's actually going market blacksmith and I'm a little astounded by that because archers on his base, he doesn't have any defense for this at all. It could be complicated. Yeah, I think Moray was in that tournament. He's gotten a bit better since. I had a sick trap. I had a trap that would make Viper jealous in uh, in the one game. Actually, that's not true, because I showed Viper a clip of it, and he seemed very unimpressed. In person, I, I was like, Viper, did you see this trap I did? He's like, of course not. I showed him, like, dude, check it out. And he immediately was like, well, why did you delete the wall? Why did you do that? I'm like, okay, this isn't fun anymore. I think I showed him. Fishing ships are still alive for Margugu somewhere, but they are going this way. So that is not where you want them. But the archers are here, and a villager kills that happened. Now, I think if Margugu can instantly run with these archers here, Classic Pro has problems. Because Classic Pro has no defense out there because he's towered here. Margugu wants to get more vil kills. But yeah, like, if these archers now go here, those vils are dead. Classic Pro should be in trouble here. Margugu still has food with the, uh, he still has food with the cows. He still can go for an archer follow-up, and, oh, there you go. That's, that's good stuff from Classic Pro. That's really good damage control, because he stops those archers from going there. But, the archers can go around this way, and still access that area. So, you're not out of the woods yet here, Classic Pro. And, these archers can also loop around to hit this. Wow, Classic Pro really trying to get up to Castle Age right now. Crazy. But he's winning water. He has one water. But Marguga will be happy with the villager kills. Classic Pro clicks up. We've got one archer and another archer following over this direction. Now, Classic Pro could in theory maybe like buy some stone. But guys, he's like running out of wood. Does Classic Pro the name know the name of this map? It's called Evacuation, dude. You gotta evacuate. He's being forced to evacuate now. Normally you plan. He might need a tower here because archers are on the way. And he has not reacted yet at all. Good stuff from Margugu. I don't know how much the like, Hidden Cup Classic Pro watched, for example. He did play in the qualifier for Hidden Cup, but this map wasn't in the quali. Margugu watched all of Hidden Cup and casted with me and 
really probably has a good mind for the meta. And so I, I think he's played it well, all things considering, uh, all things considered. Skirms, though, for Classic Pro. Classic Pro is still going to be in Cast Lage pretty quickly here. And Margugu's archers, this is their time, right? The, if these archers could get here right now and kill these vills, this is their time. This would be huge. Margugu needs to move. But he's macroing. He's dropping a stable. Maybe thinking about a way to handle answer skirms. He's got a time window. And here he goes. The Witchers are weak from before. Only one skirm's coming over. Now there's the second. And maybe that window is closed shut, and Classic Pro will be feeling good yet again. T90, are you getting royalties for them using your map? Yes. Incredible royalties. In fact, that's the main reason I host tournaments, is really for the royalties. I didn't know this was actually in the map pool until today. <laughs> I didn't get a message about it. I'm, I'm cool seeing it again. Usually I'm a little like, I mean, technically I don't bar anyone from using the maps, right? There's a map, there's a map, people can use it. This just is more of a compliment that tells me that people really like the map. But like if EVAC or some of the Hidden Cup only maps, for example, were in every tournament, it would actually bother me because then it wouldn't feel as special for me. But oh, we didn't see enough EVAC. I wanted to see, it was actually one of the most played maps. I wanted to see more of it. So this is nice. Elephant for Margugu. So again, you can't make knights with the Civ. Margugu's going to drop a TC here quickly. There is a knight on the way from Classic Pro. And Classic Pro, he didn't take losses that he wasn't able to stabilize from on land. And he has full water control right now. Knight's going to come over here. Margugu loses a vil, but he'll have a monk around. The issue for Margugu will be, can he do damage here and it feels like the answer is yes because classic pro still got lots of villagers around the issue for classic pro will be can classic pro properly expand his economy out here really tricky map love the monk condition from margugu so yeah he's protected here and here he is with an elephant and crossbows and classic pro can see this coming from a mile away but where do you go for now, he goes to that tree. <laughs> T90, can you teach us to get rich on royalties too? Yeah, just just come up with a map. It's amazing. Instantly into under the Forbes list, right after you come up with a map. The royalties in Age of Empires map is just crazy. Prize pool for the tournament, solid, five hundred to a thousand dollars. But the royalties, man, really takes you places. So I love this because both players are actually... I'm being sarcastic, by the way, uh, If for those that can't pick up on my sarcasm. Um, it's interesting as the elephant gets deleted sad times, how both players have different issues here with their current situation. Classic Pro is having problems out here. He needs to stabilize his economy. For Margugu, he can't actually cross because of these galleys sitting here, which is really annoying. So... He can no longer evacuate, but his eco here is actually great, right? Like, he's got farms here. His vills are pretty protected because he's got this army. This is a really close game for a game five. Classic Pro loses that monk. But, like, look at Classic Pro's economy here is just a disaster area. And he's going for a lead skirm now, he's, but he has to make more skirms because he lost some of his earlier skirms. And now we just have Margugu expanding. I, I prefer Margugu's position right now. I really do. That's kind of funny, but but no, I think his position is really nice. I think what the challenge will be, solely because of his Civ, actually, is just what do you do when you can't make knights against skirms? I think Light Cav could be decent. Oh, Classic Pro, you need to have ships here. Classic Pro, you cannot allow this to happen. Oh, the crossbows are passing. The Navy for Classic Pro is denying the crossing here. And he isn't protecting his own crossing because, well, he owns those gates. But now the crossbows can wreak some havoc here. Now the skirms need to run over. This is so messy. 
And Margugu says, thank you very much. He's going to kill a monk. No, he won't kill a monk. But it's just messy for Classic Pro. Meanwhile, three town centers for Margugu. This is the dream economy for him. Horse collar's already in, so any farms he adds will be good. Here he's got some monks. And, well, he... he yeah, he converts the scout there. Skirms will be dealt with. I think if Dravidians need an answer to Skirms, they can always add Siege. They do have cheap Siege. A lot of people forget that. And these villagers are going to make a run for it. Ooh, Classic Pro, you got to be patrolling, dude. I'm guessing they killed a Vil. Yeah, I'm guessing they found Vils, and the Vils went this way, and it pulled them out of position. Yikes! Uh-oh! Margugu was spotted because it's all visible. I actually forgot for a second. I was like, how did Classic Pro know? Oh, yeah, it's all visible. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, then Classic Pro will also see that Margugu is trying to redock. Here comes crossbows. Here comes an elephant to hit the stone and the gold. Some villagers should die here. Multitasking is really tricky. There's also siege needed for Margugu. And Ballistics is on the way from the skirms. I guess at this point, Classic Pro is just like, you can't stop me if I make skirms. Because you can't make knights. So that's all I'm going to make. Even investing into Ballistics is wild. Monk goes down. Monk goes down. Yikes. Villagers are going to go down. Yikes. Margugu is struggling. Classic Pros did a great job getting his eco running as well here. He's had 10 fishing ships as well, guys. The galleys as well will benefit from the ballistics upgrade. Margugu can no longer expand. Margugu's push here. It's going to get picked off. Everything's getting picked off. This is brutal. And there's probably not a monk too far away from taking out this elephant as well and switching sides. Classic Pro has to micro here. Classic Pro micros here and micros perfectly. Yeah, Classic Pro's got a massive lead. His micro is insane. Look at this. Split. Bop. Micro split. Keeps moving. Meanwhile, like, Margugu's looking somewhere else. That's sick value there to be able to get away with those skirms. Margugu is making fires, though. So Margugu could kill the fish. And most importantly, I think, protect the crossings. Also, Elephant, shout out to this guy. Mr. Chungus over here is doing chonker things and he's going to die. But he kills a Vil first, so that's nice. That's a positive. Wow, what a close game. I think closest game of the series here. And the previous game was pretty close, but like Pop is, is dead even. Well, it's not even, but it, it's close. Noticing Margugu's on stone. Right now, Margugu doesn't really need a castle here necessarily, but I feel like that would be very natural. If he had map control through the middle, a castle towards the middle would be good. He might be forced to place a castle, I don't know, like here. To protect this crossing and to protect the farms, protect the stone. Raza, the rules here is everything's visible. That's bas basically it. There's nothing else you need to know. Everything else is fairly standard. Like we said, Markugu can just send fires in to go find those fishing ships, and he's on the way. They're fairly inefficient now, but that it, um, counts for 10 of the eco we're seeing for Classic Pro. Now Margugu going for the like have upgrade because he just needs an answer to these freaking skirms. Has enough stone for a castle. Meanwhile, Classic Pro is actually just selling his stone. Classic Pro wants to go imp. That's the plan here. Fast imp. Saracen Market is insane, man. Dang. Fire ships looking for fish. They didn't kill any yet. Fish are still protected. Imp is on the way for Classic Pro. Wow. But like, imp into what? He has ranged upgrades. He's up against Lycaf now. I think Imp into Crossbow and Arbalest would make sense. Margugu's gonna drop a castle on his face, people. Margugu once described to me a concept called going full French, okay? 
Going full French, as Margugu describes, is when you get a lead uh, and you think, okay, I, I need to win the game by a forward castle now. That is going full French. Are you kidding me? He uh, almost couldn't block that foundation. We have going full Saracen now for Classic Bro. He wants to block the castle foundation that he sees coming. But here's Margugu going full French. Now, going full French would mean losing the game. So I don't know what it is. I haven't asked him what happens if he wins, but he said going full French is, is going for the forward castle and then losing the game. But I think this is a great castle. This is a, an amazing position. And Classic Pro just doesn't have army. Like, he's going in, but he does not have a lot of army. And things could get messy over here for him as well. There's going to be Siege and Lightcap going this way too. So, you know, castle on his face... Has to pay attention to everything here. And then, they're gonna, there's going to be pressure coming in from this side, too. And it's kind of like, where do you send your crossbows? Most likely, you're going to want to send your crossbows onto the mainland. Because you can actually do damage there. Because there's no castle from Margugu. But Margugu's eco is flying right now, guys. But, you know, he's he's only on Lightcap. <laughs> as, as a comp. He needs an answer to the range units from Classic Pro in due time. And, you know, that's going to change around here and what it's going to be, his answer, as he micros... This is really good micro. He's going to take out some skirms. He's going to take out the siege. He's got the Meganel here. He actually needs his own range units. He would need skirmishers here, I would say. Classic Pro's an imp. Classic Pro getting bracer. Classic Pro getting chemistry. Now Classic Pro has minutes on range units that cannot be stopped. Like, and, and these are Saracen Arbs. Saracen Arbalest destroy buildings pretty quickly as well. Yeah, I don't think you need many camels if you're Classic Pro. You just need one or two. Just to help with the threat. This is nice. See, you can't even, you can't even count on that happening now that these upgrades are coming in. Defensive castles is what is what you need if you're Margugu. He's building a castle there. He's dropping ranges. He's definitely thinking about skirms. I, I'd like to see walls from him. Like, he needs to block off areas. It's going to be very easy for Classic Pro to find an opening on this map if you don't have some walls down. Classic Pro has to respect the castle. So he can't leave with these crossbows. And now he's going to have Arbalest. And he wants to move forward. Now, again, there's no fog of war. Sorry to keep doing that. He can see everything. So he should know there's a castle there. And he should know this is exposed. Still no elite skirm from Argugo. The sad thing is, upgraded castle age elite skirm cannot stop Arbalest. You need to be an imp. So these arbs don't, don't give a crap, man. These arbs are just going to kill everything. Including your buildings. Not sure about a tower, though. Tower is a bit different. Yep, Classic Pro just continues to move on through, and, and life is very difficult for Markugu right now. Who is raiding with your roomy swordsman? Look at him whip! Look at him nay nay there. That's sick. Lightcap could maybe kill those two arbs. I mean, this is something. You, you need these tiny raids to distract Classic Pro. And Classic Pro is going to have Bombard Cannons from this position onto this castle here. It's got 17 on food. It is 40 on food for Margugu, who's now an imp. Such a close game. And it's Dravidian Skirms. Dravidian Skirms are insane. I think Margugu needs one. Needs a little bit of patience here. And he, he can take one good engagement and things stabilize for him massively here. But he's got so much pressure. He does have the second armor upgrade. And he has the firing speed of the Dravidians. His ranges are delayed. But he can clear this up. Score is very interesting right now. I'm a little surprised that the score is so high for Classic Pro. I don't really know what's accounting for that. I guess it's not scouting. I mean, he has a good position. Oh, he's dropping a castle next to the push as well. That's so good. And the Arbs are going back to the wood line. Oh, the Skirms need to chase. If only you were Lithuanians and your Skirms were faster. Yikes! Well, the Vils are going to die anyways, so they're trying to block this off. So they can at least kill the Arbs. 
The arbs are going to die here, but villagers lo are lost. More skirms are needed, though. Eventually, Classic Pro is going to need an answer to the skirms. He does have those bomber cannons still. Oh, no ballistics for Margugu. That explains it. He's missed so many volleys here because of no ballistics. Oh, man. And he actually is really low on gold. This was his gold income. His castle will fall. More arbs, more skirms coming forward now from Classic Pro. Classic Pro still hasn't done anything about this, but he does have a Bombard Cannon that's about to take out this castle. Margugu, hoping he can hold here. Population still close. The skirm production should be pretty insane here for Margugu, but he loses his castle. That hurts. He needed that castle to protect him here. And now his Treb's exposed, and now he'll lose that. He attacked the boar! He misclicked the boar for the second time this game. Margugu kills the boar. What did the boar ever do to you? Taking his frustration out on helpless animals. Just horrible. Horrible scenes here. Dravidian skirms are no joke. Like, this is a ranged unit war. Dravidians would love that. What should be making the difference, though, is the siege. And it is. And Margugu is probably noticing that this castle is getting bombarded down as well. So he has to look there as this is still happening. Now, if Classic Pro can, can do it, eventually he could have lots of food and go for Hussars here. But it is actually easier to not invest your time into adding farms here and just add your own skirms to match your opponent because it's decent enough and then just keep up the Bombard Cannons. You don't really see him farming a ton. Um, it's just, it just takes so much time to get the Hussar tech, so much time to get the armor, add the farms, and then by then, Margugu can stabilize. That's why he continues to pressure like this. Treb actually took out the Bomberkin. Wow, that's a that's a big move for Margugu. And so he's still here, guys. He's still here. He's still lingering. Only has 25 skirms, though. Plastic Pro is 45 of them right now. 45 with four Bombard Cannons against just one Bombard Cannon from Margugu. And one big volley from three Bombard Cannons melts a whole pack of skirms here. And I think Plastic Pro closing in on, is closing in on the victory here. When you're out skirming the Dravidians, it's always a good sign. Does lose a cannon, but it's 70 military against only 9 right now for Markugu. The castle was good. I would not say that this was going full French. I think he needed something like that to have a chance because of the fast uptime from Classic Pro. And remember when I questioned Saracens? Like, he just went skirms and used the market with pretty excellent economy on the back of it as well here. Saracens are just able to hit some insane timings. It was so greedy from Classic Pro to, like, go to Castle Age and then go to Imp with so little military. But when he made it to that next age, he got to a tech that Margugu wasn't able to defend from. And the GG's called. Classic Pro wins the show match for the All-Visible Cup. But that was a fun series. That was really fun. That was a really good game. I thought that was the best game, honestly. Classic Pro is... He does such a good job at uh, getting the proper timings. I mean, Margugu could typically do this as well, but that was just so good from him. Look at his army count. Army production's insane. I don't know if, if he's just queuing with his buildings all the time or if he's adding more military buildings than most, but, I mean, he, he was just producing everywhere. And uh, now I, I, I do have... To say, I feel like Margugu's fire galleys just died so quickly. So I don't think the early feudal age approach from Margugu is necessarily the best. I did like the archers. But um, maybe the archers needed to come out a bit faster. But it, again, there's just like no wood on this map. It's really hard to afford ships and archers at the same time. So getting that right is easier said than done. Nice KD there from Classic Pro. Pretty much took good fights the whole game. And Margugu... What I thought... The reason I thought he was going to win is because he had so much food. He had so much farming eco, but can't compete with the market. Saracens can just buy the food or buy the stone or do whatever they need.
by uh, mining all that gold. Or they could use the excess wood, sell it, get gold, and it can work that way.